And I'm going to get into that. But I had a picture of a horse, of a triple crown, three times winner. They put blinders on him. On his side. On, both, on this, on the left side, your right. My right, your left. Because horses have a tendency when the mud is kicking up, because when they're out that gate, psh, they're galloping. You're galloping. Amen. We have a tendency to look to see what someone else is doing. Come on, man. But Isaiah 30, Isaiah 40, 31, but they that wait upon the Lord. Some, somebody waiting on the Lord. Shall renew their strength, they should mount up as wings of an eagle. Not a pigeon, not a hawk, not a robin, but as an eagle. Each wing spans six feet in diameter. And they should run purposely, and you won't get weary. And you say, a lot of us are getting weary in our spirit, in our minds. And your emotions determine your emotions. Your emotions determine your emotion. Some people have it at their house, motion detectors. Something moving, but everything is starting from here. So today, in this series, Relentless, I want to get into your emotions. As it pertains to what God says that your emotions should be. Not what your friends, not what your checking account says, not what the boss said, not what your spouse said, not what your children, not what your parents. It's what the word says. See it? All your uh, corner phrase, and I'm using, I'm gonna put it on bands when we get out of the building. Amen. And some of you are saying, when are you gonna get the building? If you keep praying. Amen. Glory. And stop gossiping about it. Thank you. And start a sewing. Yes. We'll have a building soon. Okay. So it will be that you think. My mama used to say, Pastor Fred, <laughs> if it ain't written, it ain't real. I'm sorry, talk on this side. If it ain't written, Pastor Mike, it ain't real. I've done it, I've achieved, I've been in some, I've got some, some contracts, I, 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 I trust people, Pops. But I've learned now. Like Ronald Reagan says, trust but verify. Right. And sometimes people used to tell me things and I just took them at face value because I, that's the type of person I am. I'm not a, a cynical person. I, 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 I trust you. I, if you give me your word, I, uh, uh, David, if you give me your word, I trust you for, to be a man of your word. Right. But I've learned now. Right. Some people, don't put value behind your word. But God, yes. my, when, when God says something, he stands up behind his word. He backs his word. He says in Psalms 118, verse 89, my word is forever settled. Once I speak it, it's done. Malachi 3 and 6 says, I am the Lord God of all flesh. I change not. He doesn't go back on his word. Amen. If he said he's going to supply all of your needs, believe it. Don't put a, a question mark when he put a period. Yeah. 
relentless. If I say relentless. relentless. I was at a, a game yesterday at the SC played Arizona State. And we had a wonderful time yesterday. Got a chance to meet some new people, new friends. The priests, the worst, the, the, the musicians, we were out together. And, uh, and, uh, a couple other people who we were just members, Derek and Damien. We just had a wonderful time. And as I was sitting in the stadiums, Chuck, at the Los Angeles Coliseum, had to be at least brand new, about 70,000 people. We were cheering on. It was just nice to be out. I'm just taking the, everything in. And I saw banners. And I saw some writing above the banners. And it said, we play for championships. Man. We don't play for just to be in the game. We play for championships. And something resonated in my spirit. I'm in this ministry to win. But on my way, there are going to be some battles. That's right. But I'm playing for the championship. And you're going to have to go through some battles in life if you're serious about having victory. Well, I challenge the members of the Corona Church to go open doors. Are you in it to win? Are you in for championship? There are four stages to your challenge. I was going to get to those stages last week, but the Holy Spirit said, that's not the week. So, for the, the seconds that I have left, let's do this. Let's, let's, let's turn to first key. spoken to your heart 
get connected with this church. Started following the lead of this house and various departments. But if you in it for championships, there are four points that's gonna validate you or stages that you have to go through to get the victory. And you have to be relentless. You can't let things, peripheral, peripheral vision, stop you from your, from your focus. The horse that I was going to show you, he they kept the blindness on you. They call it, what do they call it? The Breeders' Club, the uh, Kentucky Derby, the Triple Crown, and all these. You can't talk about it. Any horse camp, a uh, 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 horse lovers in, you know. Okay. One, that look, look at one here. Pop <laughs> Okay, watch this. Here's stage number one. Second Kings chapter two, verse one. And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take Elijah with the J up to heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah would that Elijah when he when when Elijah with the S from Gilgal. Everybody say Gilgal. Gilgal is the first step to this championship as a, a believer. Gilgal is a city that represents purification. See, you can't really get the victory if you haven't been saved. You, you, you got to be saved. So God, the Holy, so the Holy Spirit can give you the victory. Purification. Well, what do you mean by purification, Pastor? Exodus chapter 4, don't turn there, but just write this down. You, this. you guys remember the story when Moses, the Bible says that the angel was about to kill Moses because he had not circumcised his sons. Circumcision is a picture of covenant relationship. You're cutting off the dead skin, that, that fleshly skin that want to get, want to get, wants you to um, commit adultery when you should be, lying when you should be, fornicating when you should be, stealing when you should be, whispering when you shouldn't be. That's that flesh. That's why it has to be cut off you. And Moses' wife, Zipporah, saw the angels who got ready to kill Moses. Now he's a servant of God. You know you can be serving God in the church, urchins, singing, playing musicians, working the cameras, and not doing what God Stop. Not doing what you know that you should be doing. You climb up and works. The Bible says in, in 1 Samuel 15, 23, obedience is better than sacrifice. Because a disobedience is witchcraft. Oh, so Moses' wife took a stone, took the boys, and cut the sports skins off. Put, 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 put your hand out. Cut it off and, and told her husband, a bloody husband you are. Purification. God, God saved his life. One of the greatest prophets of Israel ever known. Moses. Went up, got the Ten Commandments. Fast, didn't eat for 40 days, for 40 nights in the presence of God. The song, Lord, show me your glory. It came from Moses. God said, he said, Lord, just show me your glory. I just want to see your glory. God said, you can't see my, my, you can't see me because you did your die. But I'm just going to pass by. You're just going to see the shadow. Wow. Wow. The first sin is Gilgal. Purification. Moses. Now watch this. Moses. 
Moses when they are on their journey. Getting ready to, 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 to sit, getting in, 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 in line to start a crossing over. These people lined up. What happened? Moses had not, those 40 years they were running around. You thought he would have learned a lesson with his own family. Now he's a leader, and he's still, none of the people under 20 have been servicing. No wonder they couldn't get in. No wonder they was murmuring and complaining. Oh, we out here, he brought us out of Egypt. Now we out here in the desert. They forgot that there was a pillar of cloud by night that turned into fire. And during the day, it, it covered them. And walk when they walk, we walk. You thought they would stop complaining. Now, oh, we ain't got no food to eat. <laughs> we used to have flesh parts in the eat you alive. <laughs> so what God do? God command, watch this, this is a miracle. This is it was, it blesses me when I read the Bible Five and I ask the Holy Spirit. I know quails, seagulls, you always oftentimes see them around the water in the ocean. They're in the desert. The, God commanded the, 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 the seagulls to come low enough where they could be Hey, Aaron. They were taking stick and knocking them, just knocking them out of the sky. All the flesh, they, the, the Bible says the flesh was coming out of their teeth and made them feel you eat so much, you just, just. <laughs> you would have thought that that would have been enough. The flesh, they murmured and complained. I, I, in this church, they murmured and complained. In this church. And they don't know that God is listening to you. You wonder why you're going around in your relationship. You'll find that you are God is listening to you. Listen. He says, stop it. Yes. So, what he did was, the first city, this is what they had to do. Write this down. We'll turn to Exodus. For the sake of time. Write this down. Exodus chapter 12, verse 44. He commanded all of them, the older, the, the older ones that were still alive, cut off their force. So, Gilgal is a picture of what? Purification. Right? Are you with me? Now let's go to, let's keep reading. Verse 2. Then Elijah, with the J, the master servant, master prophet, said to Elijah, the servant, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. I know that word Bethel. Bethel is a picture of realization. You, you realize now why you say it, because you have to be, that flesh has to be cut off of you. You realize now, God, being a Christian is not something that you can just put in cruise control. It's not something that you said, well, I'm going to church once a month. That's it, God. Hey. I owe me me. <laughs> but see, you realize something. You remember this, the story about Ruth? Read it, read it. You guys read it. There's only four little chapters. Just four little chapters. The book of Ruth, she left Bethlehem, Judah. The house of God, the house of bread. When you leave the house of God, guess what? Families in your life will come. She went to Moab. When she met the Moabites, and she had two sons, and and, and the names of them, they both died. Then, was on top of that, the husband died. Then <laughs> she had two daughters. Ruth 
And Oprah, Oprah mother named Oprah Winfrey mother named her after this uh, uh, the sister of the sister. She said, Oprah. Oprah. Ruth says, there's a famine in the land. My husband is dead. My sons are dead. I'm going back home. I realize things will be better. I'm not gonna spend time on that because that's a whole message. But Oprah said, please don't leave, I'll go where you go. She said, Ruth said, no, stay with your people. I don't have another son to give you. If I did get pregnant, it would have to be a miracle. And then you'd be too old for him to raise for you to marry another one of my sons. So she cried. That's one thing. People can cry. I don't care how, how I don't care how much you cry. I don't care how much you promise me. I want to say, I don't care how much you jump up, how you who shit get up, uh -huh. but when you come back on the ground, I want to see how straight you walk. Because I learned that talk is cheap. And Ruth and, 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 and Oprah was just talking. Kissed and cried all night, they messed up tears, messing me up. But Ruth said, where you go, I go. She realized something. Your God, my God. She realized there was a blessing upon that her mother-in-law. Although things didn't look good. Somebody need to understand that it's a blessing on my life. Yeah. Although things may not look good. The second witness by the said that just should walk by faith. The shelter story. She went back to Bethlehem, Judah. She realized that it's a blessing upon her mother-in-law. She realized that she needed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And she was gleaning in the field to get some food. And boy, as a kinsman redeemer, saw and, and asked his servants, who is that fan? Who's that little killing? I never said, who is she? That's Naomi's daughter-in-law. She was married, but her son's died. She's single now. None of you servants don't even look at her again. And she has six passes, fill her up to the brink, and sit her home. Why was she sick? Why did Boaz do that? And some of you said that you're hearing the story for the first time, but you go home and read Ruth chapter 4. But before you read, I ask God to give you the Holy Spirit to give you insight and insight. Ruth, why did he give her six pair of bushels? Because he knew that Naomi knew the language, the tongue, the word, when you come here, you come because you know I know the language. You know I know the word. Yes. To help you so that you can find rest. Seven is the number of companies. Yes. And some of us, truth be told, a lot of the areas in your life is incomplete. Yes. You come here to get complete. On the day of Rosh Hashanah, to make you a head and not beneath, yes. above your circumstances. Yes. Yes. Naomi says, girl, do you know what you just, she, she probably didn't have a tongue thing, but she probably wanted to speak in tongues. So do you know what, what this man just, you know what he's saying in this, in this bush that he's giving, you know what he's telling you? He will not rest until you are his. That's why he gave a sit. Okay, but he, so they realize 
Ruth realized, Naomi realized. So each city, each step, as a Christian walk, there are four steps. Purification. Not only was the circuit side, not only just hit, to put a, a, a footnote on the, on, the, on, the, on the purification, go back for your notations. Three qualifications that a Christian or an Israelite, God instructed them to do to circumcise their heart and, and, and um, 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 <coughs> we are a Jew, according to Romans 2 28, Romans 2 28, not circumcision. And Paul says, not, Who is a Jew? He says, The Jew is not what you would love the circumcision. Um, the, the foreskin, and that makes you a Jew. But that's a new, we're on a new, we're on a, a new cover, man. We're on the grace and not under the law. So, so Romans 2, 28, 29, you read that Paul is he's saying that the circumcision on the outward is not, is, that's past it. You need to be circumcision on the heart. Number two, circumcision of the ear. Remember this, this uh, in the nursery around in the Baptist churches? Be careful, little children, what you see. Be careful, little children, what you see. As a guy up above, and you looking down. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, what you hear is very important. Number three, a circumcision of the tongue. And, and James 2, I, I won't even go with James 2. We put bits in horses' mouths, big horses, and that bit will turn them this way. Huge ships! We take a little rudder, like a little donut, and turn it, and the ship turns. But God is saying, with that tongue, you can tame that tongue. Write this down in your note takers. Matthews 12, 36. Matthews, what's his name? Matthews 12, 36. Tanya, where are you? I see you, baby. Good, okay, all right. Matthews 12, 36 says, do you know this? So, so everybody now, you've been called out by the Holy Spirit. See, what you don't know, it's not sin. But what you do know, and you do things become sin. Do you know every outer word that you speak, God's gonna judge? Joy, let me talk to you, because you give me joy. Joy, do you know every that you think this well I'm just I'm just talking about my sister. Let's get on my nerves. Oh, I'm just I'm just talking about Pastor Fred. He can handle it. Or I'm just talking about a doctor. God says, every idle word that you speak will be judged even at the end. So services of the tongue, that purification, your ear, your tongue, and your heart. The heart is not. So, purification, give God, realization, what's the next thing? Bathroom, realization. When you come into the house of God to break bread, you realize, now you're realizing some things. But the next city, the third city, the third city is Jericho. Confrontation. And come back next week, because I'm going to give the next two cities. Father, we thank you and we praise you for the day. We honor you today. We thank you that you're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob.